Call to order. This is the 17th regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our Deputy City Clerk, Linda Long, will read the quote of the evening. Working together, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. Thank you, Linda. Roll call, please. Bourne. Here. Bauk. Here. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Here. Hannah. Here. Heideman. Excused. Kath. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ressler. Here. Sampson. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Bercy. Here. Wangaman. Here. Fifteen. We have a quorum. Uh, Alderman Bauk is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then he would like to say a few words <laughs> after he's done with the pledge, and then Alderman Wangaman would like to address the council. There is one. If you have your microphone. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Corey. <clears throat> if you'd like to, please do. Alderman Bauk would like to say a few words. You can build. Oh, Alderman Wangaman, I guess you get the first dibs on saying a few words. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to remind everybody, of course, that tomorrow is December 7th. And December 7th was significant in the history of this country in that it changed in America overnight. Never again would we be the same country we were before. I want to talk just briefly about a young man by the name of Charles C. Ehler. He was in the Navy. He was the signalman third class stationed on board the Arizona. He wasn't supposed to be on duty that morning because he had switched with a friend of his who was uh, ashore on uh, personal business. Charles C. Ehler's position on Arizona was high atop of a mast on the ship that they referred to as a cage mast. And there were a signal uh, bridge built up there, and this is where Charles was working. On the morning that the uh, Arizona was struck, one of the first bombs that struck the vessel hit the signal bridge. And he was immediately listed uh, missing in action. He is significant to us because Charles C. Aylard was from Sheboygan. He was the first, or had the dubious honor, I guess, of saying that he was the first uh, man from Sheboygan County to lose his life in World War II. And it's a name today that's pretty well forgotten all over, but uh, he's listed on the Arizona Memorial. And if you go to the Arizona Memorial today, uh, Charles Aylard is still there on duty. He, him and 1,177 of his comrades uh, still man the Arizona, which is still listed as a uh, fully registered U.S. naval ship. Every time a naval ship passes, they uh, do the proper honors, dip their flag, and, and so forth. But I just wanted to remember that, I uh, want everyone to remember that Sheboygan County was affected very early in the war, and Charles Ehlert's war lasted just five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Alderman Buck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. I appreciate the, the council suggesting that last time, and I appreciate the mayor uh, for putting it on, uh, on the agenda. And I appreciate Alderman Wangaman's comments, too. Mine will be much less, uh, less, much less significant than the sacrifices that were made that day. Um, I want to talk just for a moment about, uh, I was surprised and disappointed by the budget vote. I wasn't able to be here, um, but uh, that's the way it goes. My side lost. That's the way the system works. Um, the last election, um, the party or the side, the philosophy of lower taxes and less government took the governorship, took Madison. Um, the side of lower taxes and less government took the state senate. The side of lower taxes and less government uh, kicked a guy out of the assembly who's been voting the other philosophy for a long, long time. Um, but the politicians, those voters sent last time, completely ignored that condition and the current will of the voters. All four of the taxing authorities here in Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, 
the city of Sheboygan, the uh, Sheboygan Area School District, and LTC. All four of them ignored the current will of the voters and raised your taxes. It's like we were California. It's like we were the only part of the country that didn't get the message, those people we elected last time. So, um, but the system worked. Again, as I said, didn't go my way, but we voted. And that's what's great about America. My side lost. Um, but that illustrates the power of elections. Elections <coughs> matter. Elections really matter. The people you elected last time to these seats caved into union pressure and voted not to save the city $84,000 a year on something as common and simple as cleaning city hall. That's one police officer not on the streets next year because we couldn't privatize something as simple as cleaning City Hall. The people you elected last time to these seats passed a tax hike to fund the library at a level because of demagoguery about something about the fall of the Western world if we didn't have ESLS. The people you elected last time in the aldermanic election uh, moved money around in this budget like it's, like it's a shell game in order to avoid tackling what are the root causes of why we have budget problems in this city and in many cities around America? But that's my opinion. That's my philosophy. And that philosophy uh, that government-run organizations have become burdensome and expensive. And that's not happened overnight. That's happened over decades. I and others were elected four years ago to bring some business discipline and some business processes uh, to the way we run our government. Um, and that philosophy got me elected and got me reelected. But there's another philosophy out there. There's a philosophy that says the way we've always done it is okay. In fact, the way we've always done it is an entitlement. That city workers, especially represented ones, should be immune from the forces acting on our taxpayers. And that these 300 or 400, 300 people ought to be overcompensated by 40%. Those are U.S. government numbers. Overcompensated by 40%. Why? Because they want it. In one of the union negotiations, the phrase was, those guys that went to Kohler and to Thomas Industries, they chose that job, we chose this job, and this job comes with predictable big benefit increases and wage increases, and we want it. That was their rationale. They chose that job, they wanted the bennies. So, my four years as an alderman will be concluded in 133 days, but who's counting, right? Um, there's an election coming up, and the purpose for me speaking tonight isn't just to talk about philosophy, it's to talk about, to the citizens of Sheboygan, there are going to be 10 open aldermanic seats in April. 10. 10 sixteenths of this group will look different, very possibly, uh, in April. That's significant. Very rarely does it get that high. That will be a sweeping change for the way this city is run. The other philosophy, the big government philosophy, is going to pack the slate with their people. They have political operatives here locally that are funded by their money from Washington and their money from Madison. Political operatives in this town to get people with their philosophy elected. They have money and they have foot soldiers. They even have websites. You can go to the union websites, to the political action pages, and get whole manuals on how to run a campaign, how to win a campaign. And did I mention money and foot soldiers? Meanwhile, people who see the world with my philosophy, the way I see the world, they're busy running businesses. They're busy keeping their businesses afloat, frankly, today, trying to just keep up. They're creating jobs so they can pay more taxes to fund this bloated government we run. So, my plea to you tonight is, if you have a financial education, if you run a business, if you are an accountant, if you're a lawyer, we need you. If you are in financial services, we need you. If you run a small business, we need you on this council. If you've taken a business that was broken and fixed it, we need you. If you've taken a business that was okay and made it a great business, we need you. If you're retired and have done any of that stuff, we really need you because you have time. I want to address two things and then I'll, I'll wrap up. It has to do with workload. For those candidates out there that are busy running businesses and paying taxes, um, you may be worried about the workload. It's really manageable. Many of the members of the, the council right now have jobs 
outside of their aldermanic duties. Uh, both mayors have always been very respectful of my time and uh, have kept me. I've, I've told them I could be on, afford time for one committee and they both always respected that. Um, committees have worked around my work schedule. Um, and and uh, so you can do the workload if you, if you have a day job. Um, there's a little learning curve at first, but you can manage it on eight, maybe 10 hours a week um, once you get into the, into the groove. Um, the other thing is about the campaign. A campaign's a little bit of work. So I will say to people out there who have money and foot soldiers, if you're with the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, candidates that have your philosophy need your help. If you are with the Greater Sheboygan Committee, candidates with your philosophy need your help because the other side, they've got money and they've got foot soldiers. And, and then the, the last thing about being an alderman that I'll address is about the publicity. A lot of candidates uh, that are busy running businesses and have lives in the community, they're worried about the stuff they read about in the newspaper. And um, for my part, I probably bring a lot of that on myself. I participate vocally in the paper, I write letters, I, I say controversial things and hope that it, it'll, it'll tweet conversations. But you don't have to do it that way. If that's not your style, most of the people on this council right now get so much more done than I do by what happens in the committees. They, you don't see their names in the papers, but they're doing very good work. They're getting votes figured out in the committee. They're, they're entertaining ideas in the committee and bringing them to us. So if your deal is, I don't want to end up in the paper like all those people that end up in the paper, you can be very effective and not end up in the paper. Let me, let me say that. Um, so in wrapping things up, and I appreciate it, Mr. Mayor, next year, your taxes are going up. In the years after that, they're going up again <coughs> to fund even higher wages and benefits for about 300 already over-benefited employees. Not because those employees have exceeded expectations, not because they've created a new money-saving process and shifted to less labor-intensive methods like we do in business. They're gonna raise your taxes just because, well, they want it, they want your money. And they're gonna get candidates that have that philosophy on all 10 of those ballots. The side that always answers the budget question with higher taxes, those candidates will be well funded and will be well supplied with foot soldiers that have a very narrow set of solution ideas. What the city needs is candidates with an education and experience to make businesses and operations better. I believe that we get the government we deserve. We get the government we deserve. If you're a candidate out there that has my philosophy, we need you to get engaged. That's my philosophy. And if it's your philosophy, Sheboygan needs you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Corey. <clears throat> okay, moving on. We are looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the last council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a letter from Mike Vandersteen advising that uh, due to the fact he's undergoing uh, ankle surgery next week uh, and his recovery time, won't permit him to attend for several months. He's resigning as citizen member of the Government Structure Committee. That uh, lies over. And we have uh, Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council, hereby submit the following appointment for your... Excuse me, Steve. I'm sorry. We do, we do need to vote on the uh, resignation of uh, Mike Vandersteen. That doesn't lie over. Move. President Kittleson. Move to approve the appointment. Resignation. I mean, the, yeah. move to approve uh, the resignation. Move to accept the resignation. Thank second. you. We have a motion and a second to accept the resignation. Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Sorry, Steve. Everybody submit the following appointment for your consideration. Robert Ryan to be appointed to the Tax Incremental District uh, Number 14 Joint Review Board. Signed by the Mayor. Anybody need a resume or anything on this one? <laughs> um, that lies over. More appointments? Confirmation. Uh, confirmation of appointments? Yes, we have confirmation. 
Henry Shane to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee, term to expire 4-30-2011. Signed by the Mayor. Uh, Alderman Boren requested uh, some background on Henry Shane. Uh, Henry's wife, uh, Anna, is on the International Committee, uh, has been for years, went with us to uh, Esslingen, our sister city, this past spring. And Henry gets involved in a lot of the international uh, Mayor's International Committee uh, activities. He's helped us out quite a bit, and uh, being the husband of Anna, we'd uh, liked him to be on the committee also. So that's, that's all, all about Henry. Um, yes, we have a motion to confirm. A motion to confirm his appointment. To second. The, thank you. Motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kat. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Wiesler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Langeman. Aye. Born. Aye. 15. Motion carries. <clears throat> what I would like now uh, is to have uh, the individuals. Chad? The appointment of you to the Joint Review Board needs to be approved today because the Joint Review Board is meeting on the 13th. Okay. So if we could get a suspension of the rules to appoint the mayor as the member to that board and then we can proceed forward as needed. Move to suspend. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? Nobody is. The rules are suspended. Move to approve then the appointment <coughs> of the mayor to the tax and <coughs> To, the re to be appointed to the review board. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Let me just explain. Uh, TID uh, 14 is the new one we're creating for the uh, former Walmart property with that development. So, Under discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Excuse me. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. And <coughs> 15 ayes. Motion carries. What I have now is some citizens' awards uh, for people that have uh, saved others' lives in the, cities, in the city by administering uh, CPR in times of emergency. And I would like the following individuals to come up and line up in order by the podium. Um, first, we have Wayne Greenwood. Is Wayne here? And some guy named Jeff Herman. Is he here? Uh, we also have uh, Marla Payne. Is Marla here? Mike Wappler. I see Mike back there. And Tim Schmidt is here. If you folks can come up, and also if, if any of the people that you've helped out are here and would like to be recognized and say a word or two, uh, please step forward also. That would be up to you. Yeah. So what we have here are... Citizens Awards cert Certificates of Commendation uh, from the Mayor's Office. The, revol excuse me, the results of a study reviewing outcomes of persons who suffer sudden cardiac arrest in Sheboygan County was done. This study looked at a number of things such as bystander CPR slash response times and whether the patient survived the event. The study separated the outcome of patients whose event happens in the city of Sheboygan and those having events outside of the city of Sheboygan. A surprising result showed that six of the 27 patients, or 22%, uh, having cardiac arrest in the city were resuscitated. Uh, one of the major reasons for such a good survival rate is the number of bystanders who started CPR prior to the arrival of the first responders and ambulance. In other words, it's not just the first responders and the ambulance, it's the citizens that, have, that help each other out. Tonight, I'd like to take a few minutes to recognize and thank a few citizens who has saved the lives of people who I am sure are very grateful that they took the time to learn CPR and didn't hesitate to react 
when required. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize Wayne Greenwood. On January 28th, 2010, at Emmanuel Church on Illinois Avenue, Thomas Vandercreek uh, was playing basketball and suffered cardiac arrest. Um, when Tom went into cardiac arrest, uh, Wayne Greenwood started CPR, and Tom is here because of it. Wayne? Thank you, Wayne. Another incident occurred on March 20th, 20, 20, 2010 at the Stephanie Weil Center. Uh, John Vinson had collapsed. Fortunately for John, Fire Chief Jeff Herman, who was off duty at the time, was nearby and reported to the incident and immediately began life support for the victim. Because of Chief Herman's actions, um, John is here today. And, and I'll tell you what, you, you did get very lucky. please, so the folks can hear you at home. Right, no, the right, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. There you go. It's a good thing I think Jeff and I both like Pink Floyd, because we were on our way to the Stephanie <laughs> Wild Center. I didn't see the concert. <laughs> but anyway, really, he, uh, he saved my life. And uh, the real kick is, I'd say within a month or so after I was kind of back on my feet and stuff, I went by to thank him. He's thanking me for coming in to thank him. I mean, you know, talk about a human being. Another thing is, he was there, he saved me. I had a 42-year-old nephew this past Halloween. He was on his way to a party, lived in New York City. He went down, sudden cardiac death. By the time the EMTs got there, it was too late. He's no longer here. So I just know how important it is. And Jeff, thanks so much. Really. I mean, really. What can I say? Thank you. On September 2nd, 2010, at Mike's Expert Auto Repair Service, familiar with the place, 2044 Calumet Drive, Don, Donald Justinger, an employee of Mike's Auto, um, just, uh, Marla Payne is here. Marla was outside the garage, and when she came around the front of the garage, she saw Don laying face down. When she discovered he was not breathing and could not, not find a pulse, she started CPR. Also, Mike Wappler, the owner of Mike's Expert Auto, assisted his sister Marla with the CPR. So both Mike and Marla, Don Justinger is alive today because of you. Is Don here also? Well, Tim was involved in this one also. Oh, okay. Sorry, Tim. I have you. I thought you were, I thought you did something on your own. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Tim Schmidt, who I'm very familiar with, that's why I'm giving him a hard time, um, is, was a customer of Mike's and also assisted with CPR until the EMS arrived. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we have here, we, we have here Donald Justinger, and also we have Tom Vandercreek. Okay. Uh, Microphone's all yours, sir. It was kind of a warm afternoon, and uh, I really didn't feel anything coming, but all of a sudden I just tipped over. And if it wasn't for these people that knew what they were doing, I sure wouldn't be around anymore. So, thank you very much. <laughs> My cardiologist told me that uh, Wayne did one heck of a job. He broke a few ribs, but if you do CPR the right way, which I'm sure Mr. Herman can attest to, 
you're doing it right, and uh, I owe my life to the man to my right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody, for caring about your, your fellow citizens. Thank you. Next, we have public forum. Do we have public forum? Yes, we do. Frank Kozan. Sure. Five. Could you give me your home address, please, Frank? 2829 Erie Avenue. Um, I want to say to the council and the mayor, thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, address you. I have some comments about uh, a little aspect of our city, uh, some thoughts I'd like to share with you. I was pleased to see in the paper a while ago that there are plans to make a small park at the corner, that'd be the northeast corner of 10th and Erie Avenue, where the body shop used to be and since burned down. There's not much I understand that you can do with a piece of property that size because of setbacks and what have you. So the proposal to make a park and uh, make it an invitation to people uh, entering the city seems like a really good idea. And uh, I think that's creative uh, thinking. I uh, would like to comment on the design that I saw in the paper. I'm guessing it's a preliminary design. You need to put something on paper to put in the newspaper for people to see. Um, for those people who didn't see it, it's uh, rather uh, tall, not too wide. It looked like masonry structure, massive, with a uh, gable and an arch flanked by these two masonry uh, pillars. Right up close to the, um, the corner, there's not much of um, the distance between the uh, sidewalk and the structure. And uh, I'm hoping this is a preliminary design because uh, my, my feeling is that this is not a welcoming structure. It's a wall. It's in your face. It's saying, um, this is a barrier. I, and when I look at it, I, s I don't see the space behind it. If you did any landscaping, it'd almost be irrelevant because you won't see it. I uh, would hope that uh, you'd um, want to uh, get some other ideas. One, one person I spoke to said, you know what, maybe they should hold a competition. You don't have to have a competition for a museum or whatever. Small little park like this, you might get some really creative ideas. Myself, I'd like to see something that invites my eye to travel backwards towards the farthest reaches of that space, something that opens up and says to the people, you're coming to Sheboygan, you're, you're coming to the gateway community here, uh, a community that's slated for revitalization. And uh, my initial impression of that structure is that is kind of a forbidding and off-putting kind of structure. This is not to criticize the person who designed it, because we see this everywhere in other applications and it seems very appropriate. I think it's just out of scale for that size. Halfway through? Okay, thank you. So that's my comment. And I um, have another thing. I was inspired, actually, by Alderman Polk's, Polk's comment about the library. And uh, this is my card. I suspect you have a card? And you use the library? Just yesterday. Good. Well, Alderman Polk. I, tell me how to pronounce your name correctly. I've been called worse. It's okay. Bauk. 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 Okay. <laughs> I wish this were original, and I can't cite where I heard it, but I believe it's true. You defend what you love, and you love what you know. <sighs> yeah. 
if you use and know the library, I think it's natural to love the library. And if you love the library, I believe you'd want to defend it. I know the tax pressures. I appreciate your comments on that. I'm a taxpayer too. But um, Oliver Wendell Holmes said, taxes are the price you pay for a civilized society. And the library is one of the things that makes Sheboygan civilized. Uh, the library, as a matter of fact, was the very first building I walked into when I came to Sheboygan. <coughs> uh, I thought it was City Hall. It was modern. It looked good. It promised something special inside. And when I walked in and found it was a library, I thought, this city has got something. And then when I found out it was basically one woman's gift to the city, I was really impressed. And I think that fact is, is right. Frank, your five Thank minutes you. are up. Did you want another minute? Uh, all I want to do is. Uh, OK. All I want to say is that um, there is this unrelenting feeling that um, cut taxes, cut taxes, cut taxes. I think you should control taxes, but I really hope that you put things in, in perspective. And remember, I truly believe, and I think you believe this true, too. You will defend what you love, and you'll love it because you know it. So please, give every consideration to full funding of the library. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's all for public forum this evening. Mr. Mayor. If I can just have one comment, and I won't rebut or anything. One comment, okay. Alderman Powell. Um, I would uh, say that I have five minutes prepared tonight on the library as well, but I, I decided not to give that five minutes. Um, but uh, no, so perhaps you and I can have a conversation afterwards. But so excellent, good dialogue, and, and I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you, Alderman Bulk. Okay, we are done with public forum. Uh, mayor's announcements. I will be brief this evening. First of all. I would like to thank the Fat Cats organization. Fat Cats run a mountain bike race at Evergreen Park every year, uh, which is a, a big event. And they have gifted the city with $10,000 to be used at Evergreen, Maywood, or the Quarry. So this is the first time I think in my memory that an organization has given something to the city. So we thank them uh, greatly. And next year, if uh, you folks can make the uh, the mountain bike race is out there. I was there this year. Uh, it's a huge event. It's really uh, great for the area. So we thank the uh, Fat Cats organization, and uh, I'm sure we will spend this money wisely. Um, just a, a, a comment on um, Alderman uh, Bauk's uh, prepared statement here, which is I appreciate you speaking, Corey. You're, you're always... Uh, uh, you don't cut corners, put it that way, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, one thing we do have to look at, though, in the city, in, uh, you know, cut taxes, cut taxes, control taxes, or raise taxes. Uh, we have controlled taxes in this city for the past five years. Our tax levy has not gone up. This is the sixth year. During that time, we've also, um, which I was on the council, um, and I believe you were also Alderman Bauk, uh, we got rid of the stormwater fee. That was another $1.6 million in revenue that was coming into the city that went away. We also got rid of the wheel tax. That was another $200,000 in revenue that was coming into the city that went away. So in essence, over the last six years, we have not raised taxes in the city. As a matter of fact, our tax rate, our, our, our overall, you know, fees or taxes, it's the same thing. You can call it a tax, you call it a fee. Overall, we are spending less money now than we were six years ago. So overall, in that same time span, um, the leaders in Madison, who have, a lot of them have been replaced this time around, uh, raised their expenditures 5.1% every year over that time period. 5.1%, 20 over five years, they raised their expenditures 25.1%. 5%, I believe it was, 5.1% a year. While we, 
did not. So even though we're in tough fiscal times here, you know, we are controlling what we do in the city. So. But I do appreciate Alderman Bauk's uh, comments. That's what we're all about here. I have no more announcements. We will get right into the hearings. We have uh, two hearings. One, a hearing to amend the city's official zoning map to establish the use district classification of property located at 3805 Sheridan Avenue to neighborhood <coughs> residential. Yes. Uh, is there anybody that wishes to be heard regarding this issue? Two times, is there anybody that wishes to be heard? And for a third time, does anybody wish to be heard in this public hearing? There is nobody. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the hearing be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Two. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Second hearing is a hearing to amend the city's official zoning map to establish the use district classification of property located at 1232 North 40th Street to suburban commercial. Is there anybody wish that wishes to be heard regarding this hearing? For a second time, does anybody wish to be heard? For the public and for a third time, Alderman Bowers, you'd like to comment on this? Yes, thank you. Since this is close to my uh, district, uh, although I don't believe it's in it, but could someone tell me what the 1232 North 40th to suburban commercial really means, what's it zoned at now? Because uh, people have asked me, and uh, if so, if someone is around that could tell me. I can have a motion to open the floor to Steve Sokolowski. So second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Evening, Mayor, Council. Um, the property right now is a, was the council recently annexed the property. It's owned by Lakeland Toyota. It formerly was a single family residence in the town of Sheboygan, and I believe Lakeland purchased that um, for potential expansion purposes in the future. Okay. Answer your question, Alderman Bowers? Yes. Thank you, Steve. All right. Okay, is there anybody from the public that wishes to be heard? There is not. President Kittleson? Thank you, Mayor. I move that this hearing be closed. Second. Motion and a second to close the hearing. Under discussion? Uh, under discussion, may I just say that the Certainly. documents for these two hearings will be acted upon further along in the agenda. <coughs> Thank you, President Kittleson. We, we have a motion to close the hearing. Mo move to close the hearing. Is that right? Second. Motion and a second to close the hearing. Did we vote on that? No. 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 All in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Alderman Hanna, did you want to say something to the yes. council? I forgot about you I, earlier. Thank you. Everybody else is. You might as well have your two cents. <laughs> right. Thank you. And I, I, and this really dovetails with, with uh, Corey's earlier comments. Uh, this Wednesday night, we're going to have the second meeting of the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee at 7 o'clock, third floor. I invite all aldermen to come. Uh, the chairs of the Standing Committee make up that committee. And we're doing a budget prioritization process. We're starting early. Uh, so everybody's welcome. Uh, everybody in the public's, of course, welcome. Uh, so if you can get it on your schedule, it's going to be just about every Wednesday for the foreseeable future while we get this nailed down. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Consent agenda 17 1 through 17 17. President Kittleson. Thank you again, Mayor. I move that all RCs be accepted and adopted, all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all ordinances and resolutions be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with item 17.5, that's actually uh, one of my constituents, and he called me. Um, that made it to public protection and safety on a night when he was out of town on vacation. So I would ask if it would, if it would please the chair, um, if, she, if that could go back to that committee with a notification of Mr. Turks when that could be revisited. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor, yes. So uh, we have we, a motion, we can, we can send it back to PPNS. We can, however, may I uh, call up uh, Chad Peleshek from planning? Okay. We, we sure. did call Mr. Turks and I think we've been in contact with him. Um, and okay, he left me a message just saying that he, was, uh, he had been notified and then couldn't be there. I, sp I spoke with him I think on Thursday or Friday of oh, last okay. week and he stated that 
him and his neighbors are going together and he's going to be putting out a dawn to dust light on his garage okay. to take that'll be on all day to take care of the light Super. issues in the evening and he's happy with it and he said that he thanked the city for looking at his request but at this stage he should be satisfied with what he needs to do he's going to take his safety in his own hands yes all right thank you chad thank mm -hmm. you mr mayor thank you so 17 1 through 17 17. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Path? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. <coughs> Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Mercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Horn? Aye. Falk? Aye. 15. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 17, 18, and 17, 19 to be referred. Reports of officers to Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that agenda item number 1720 be referred back to the Senior Activity Center. Second. Okay, 1720. We have a motion and a second to send that back to the Senior Activity Center. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Back it goes. Okay, we have uh, reports of officers 2, 1721 by the city clerk submitting a petition from citizens who love Mead Library directing the alder persons and mayor to vote in favor of the maintenance of effort. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to file the document. I think I believe we've already We've accepted the, I would uh, accept and uh, file the document. Second. A motion and a second to accept and file. Under discussion. Alderperson Montemayor, did you have anything else? Yes. President Kittleson, you just spoke. Alderman yes. Bauck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of thoughts on this. Uh, uh, first, I, I don't know if it dovetails with the quote that the gentleman said earlier, but Napoleon said, a soldier will fight harder for his interests than for his rights. And I think that uh, the combination of the dog ordinance, remember the reaction we got about the dog ordinance, and the reaction we got on budget night of 16 of the speakers being all about the library, I think Napoleon was right, that people will get their Irish up uh, over their interests more so than they will. You're not making fun of Irish, are you? In the nicest way. Um, so there's that. And then again, Mr. Mayor, uh, appreciate your comments about how you believe we have been good stewards over the past several years with the citizens' money. I would say with all that good stewardship that we are proud of, um, we are still in the top 15% of taxed cities in Wisconsin. So we got a long way to go. Thank you, Alderman Polk. Mr. Mayor, happy to help. Okay, 1721, do we have any further discussion? If there is none, all in favor of passing say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1722 through 1730 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. We're going to take all three of these together. They are all regarding insurance. Uh, 1731 by Alderman Hanna authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract with Delta Dental to administer dental benefit plan services for the city for the calendar year 2011. 1732 by Alderman Hanna authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into agreement with Diversified Benefit Services Incorporated to administer the health reimbursement arrangement or HRA for calendar year 2011. And 1733 by Alderman Hanna authorizing the appropriate city officials <coughs> to enter into agreement with United Healthcare UMR to provide third party administration services for the city's medical health benefit plan for the calendar years 2011 and 2012. Alderman Hanna. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. First, I need to ask to suspend the rules because there's a timing issue with this. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion on suspension of the rules. Alderman Boren. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Alderman Hanna, has, has this gone through salary and, uh, formal salary and grievance committee review? Nope. <coughs> uh, what is the deadline? Uh, somebody here from finance can tell me. When I got here tonight, the documents were under my name. <laughs> uh, does anybody does anybody know whether this? Uh, I've, I've I've reviewed the documents. My I had a question on the Delta Dental. Uh, is that going to be uh, a savings over what we're doing now? 
Yeah, from what I understand, the Delta, Delta Dental is a, uh, a much more comprehensive program for about the same price. It covers a lot more than what our present uh, dental is covering, and it doesn't cost us any more. Our dental is pretty, uh, is rather weak right now. What is the timing on this? Has to be done tonight? I am not sure myself. However, my notes say suspend and, uh, yeah. and pass As my also. Note did also. Um, I know that uh, these policies are, uh, all, will all be coming into effect on January 1st, so I would think that uh, it is a timing issue, to say the least. I guess I would feel more comfortable if this would be reviewed by the Salary and Grievance Committee. I mean, if, if we, when would be your next meeting? All that would be on Tuesday. This coming Tuesday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Um, Monday. No, a I week. Would, yeah, I would think yeah, if, uh, week if, week if you want these reviewed by Salary and Grievances, we should, we should uh, call a special meeting of Salary and Grievances to get this done, and we may have to call another council meeting to get them passed. I'm just, you know, I think it would be if helpful. that's what the yeah. council decides to do. Um, I can tell you that our staff has reviewed these thoroughly and has made decisions based upon cost savings and services that we're going to receive. Um, we, we are changing... Uh, um, basically, the, the biggest part is we're going with United Healthcare instead of Humana. Uh, on, the, on the dental end, it's a very small portion of it, but I know that these uh, dollar-wise um, are coming in below what the others were. Uh, we went with the, the least expensive providers that we could find. Well, I, I, I guess I'll take your word for that, Mayor, but you know, with something significant as this, I would think this would go through salary and grievance so that our HR director could uh, at least explain to that, to, those to that committee whose job it is to kind of oversee this and then have the committee make a recommendation to come back, with a co you know, come back to the council. And then we're going to have to call a special meeting of salary and grievances and a special council meeting if everybody's... Alderman Rinflesh, Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, specifically on the COBRA installation on document 1733, if you look through the COBRA installation, there are two COBRA payments that are being transferred over. Uh, specifically, um, information must, is not, if information is not received by 12 10 2010, the customer may need to subsidize any increase in COBRA premiums. So I don't know who, uh, in terms of negotiating when that was done, but there is a date in there that is 12 10 2010. Uh, there's probably some other ones in there as well. I found that one. Um, and then this, uh, that was the major thing that I had seen. I don't know who's on the code payments. It's 12, 12, 10 is half of four rules days we can't away. really say, but I think it's a relatively important issue that we get this done today, so it's passed by 1210. Do we have any uh, further comment, Alderman Buck? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I appreciate uh, Alderperson Boren for catching that. I, I had a couple of questions for the Chair of Sour and Grievance as well about these. And, and if it didn't go through that committee, I mean, we have a system, we have a process, and that process is the department heads make a great, you know, a, a great plan, and then we have committees that review that great plan and need to discuss that great plan, and then we come and we vote on it based on their recommendation. And uh, our, our union partners are very particular about these things and how they affect their contracts, and I wouldn't feel like we should vote on that without our link to those union partners, the Salary and Grievance Committee, without those, you know, giving it its blessing. So I just think that I don't know how it ended up getting so late in the process, but I, I just I couldn't vote on this. Right. I could tell you one, one reason why it's so late in the process is that these, um, these could not be done until we knew where we were sitting on any union contracts that may have been opened for negotiating purposes for the budget. Um, you know, obviously, if they were open, we were hoping to, uh, to use some steerage to, to have people go to the county clinic, which would be a, a joint clinic, and that's why these are coming in later now. So if that answers that question. Um, if if uh, we want these to go to salary and grievances, I say we should call a salary and grievances meeting for tomorrow. So it has to be Wednesday. Hmm? Because of the 24-hour rule, it needs yeah, to be Wednesday. Yeah, it would have to be Wednesday. It would be Wednesday, probably around 5. Do we have members of Salary and Grievances that will be available Wednesday at 5? I just need to show a hand, so Salary and Grievance, who can be at least... Uh, shared services also at uh, the same what, time. And so that ends at uh, 6.30? It would, and time race if, would if, be if, if we held Salary and Grievance at 6.30, can I get... Uh, who is on Salary and Grievances that can make it, if we can have a show of hands? We'll do it 6.30 because we got 7 o'clock, we got Strategic Fiscal. Can you have one other, other than me? Yeah, I, I need somebody besides Gene. I need three people. One, two, three. And then we we're going to have to have a council meeting on Friday to get these pet, or on, on Thursday, rather. Mm -hmm. uh, can we?
Can everybody make it Thursday for a council meeting? If you cannot make it, please raise your hand. Not. One, two, three, four. It's Joe Alderman Heidemann's out. Five. That's cutting it close. <laughs> what time for the council meeting on Thursday? Hmm? What time for the council meeting on Thursday? Regular time? Seven? Yes, please. Yes, but we're going to have to make sure we have a quorum, number one. Mr. Mayor, if I may. From the bump, um, Citizen Montemayor is correct. We don't have a motion uh, before the floor, so I'll put one out there just for discussion. I would move to send these back to Sorry and Grievance. And if I could get a second. Second. Under discussion uh, with a follow-up is, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Here's one thing I don't think we want, which is to just do this for a show. I mean, our process, uh, nobody loves the process more than I and, and probably Vice President Reinfleisch do. We want to live by the process. <laughs> But if all we're going to do is just meet and approve what's already here and then meet again a couple of nights or a night later to approve what we just approved, I'm not for doing it for a show, but if the Sarian Grievance Committee would like to discuss this with the people and, and if our aldermen would like the discussion, that's the only reason I think we should do that. If, if people are okay with this, then let's just go ahead and vote, it, vote for it tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauk. So we have a motion and a second to send it back. Uh, we also have a motion uh, to, uh, to approve it, or a motion to suspend. We have a uh, motion, motion to suspend. Motion to suspend should be uh, approved. Yes. And then we move to... Okay, is anybody opposed to the rules right. being suspended, first of all? Good okay, call. the rules are suspended. We're that far. Okay. So um, now it goes to Alderman Bauk's uh, referral to Sour and Greens. Which Alderman Bauk isn't sure if it's a good idea or not. He only wants it if it's going to be a meaningful meeting, and if we just if it's a good idea and we should just vote on it tonight, I'm all for that too. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Alderman Graceler. Thank you. Uh, as a member of uh, Salaries and Grievance, I'm okay with the documents. So if that helps with anything. You're okay with the documents as is. Do we have any other comment, um, Alderman Bowers? Thank you. <coughs> I'd just like to remind this council that three years ago. Uh, one person voted and it cost the city $3 million in additional insurance premiums because it didn't go through the proper procedure. Now, if we're going to do away with procedures, then we, I don't know if this is going to save money or not, but at least people will review it. Three years ago, no one reviewed it. No one knew what it was. It went through this council and no one, I, I asked people, I wasn't here. Do you remember voting on it? And they said, we well, must have, which you must have. But it was done by one person, and that one person alone cost the city a million and a half for one year and a million and a half the second year because it was not well thought of. So bear that in mind. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Do we have any other comment? This will be a vote. We will do a roll call vote on sending it back to salary and grievances, which means we will have a salary and grievances meeting on Wednesday and a council meeting on Thursday, a special common council meeting. And I vote we'll send it back to salary and grievances. Roll call, please. Who seconded Bowers motion? Uh, that was Bowers. Our Alderman Bowers. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann is gone. Kath? No. Kittleson? Abstain. Montemayor? No. Rindfleisch? No. Riesler? No. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Wangeman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight See. yes, six no, one abstention. See you Wednesday night, 630. <laughs> okay, so Wednesday night, 630, salary and grievances in the third floor conference third room. Third floor conference room. Um, Wednesday night, Thursday night, council meeting. Um, is there anything else going on Thursday night committee meeting-wise? What is, it? what is on Thursday night? I'll be at the library meeting probably until at least 6.30. 7 o'clock council meeting Thursday night in the council chamber special council meeting. <clears throat> if anybody cannot make that council meeting, uh, please call the city clerk's office. But regardless, we have to have that done on Thursday or we will be meeting 
Friday during the day sometime because we have to get this in. Okay. So we have uh, these the three deck. <coughs> Yeah, the yes. clerk, uh, clerk's going to write those agendas, right, Linda? I don't think so. I'll write the agenda. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, moving on. We have those uh, three items will be referred back to salary and grievances. Uh, 1734 through 1738 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1739 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab driver's license application number 8884. Based upon her failure to include all relevant convictions on her application, her lengthy, lengthy record of convictions, and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Rinfleisch, <laughs> Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I ask that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept <laughs> and adopt under discussion. Uh, thank you. Is Stacy Peltier here? She's not, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, I think the uh, description um, as put in the agenda says it all. Uh, the, the record of commissions was quite lengthy. Uh, two not notifications uh, were sent uh, for uh, Ms. Peltier to um, come to the committee and discuss that lengthy uh, record of convictions and uh, neither time did she attend. So I ask that we uh, follow up a recommendation and deny. Okay, we have a motion and a second to deny. Is there any further discussion? Roll call please. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. <coughs> Fleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1740 to be referred. Report of committee. I guess this would be number seven here. 1741 by finance recommending approval of the initial resolution regarding exempt facility bond financing for Green Envirotech Holdings Corporation. Finance, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to Accept and adopt and put the <coughs> resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. <coughs> Fleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Abstain. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Matters laid over 11, 1625, RO number 297-10-11 by the City Plan Commission, amending the zoning map to establish the use district classification of property located at 1232 North 40th Street as SC Suburban Commercial. Alderperson Montemayor. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file and the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file and put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1626, RO number 298-10-11 by City Plan Commission, amending the zoning map to establish the use district classification a property located at 3805 Sheridan Avenue as NR Neighborhood Residential. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file and put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Griesler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Born. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hanna. Aye. Cap. Aye. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. 1647, resolution number 148-10-11 by Alder Persons. Hammond, Bulk, Boren, and Rindfleisch authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establishing revenue and appropriation for GO refunding bonds, issues for payment of GO promissory notes 2003, and GO general obligation refunding bonds 2001. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries, 1648, resolution number 149-10-11 by Alder Persons, Hammond, Bauk, Boren, and Rindfleisch, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for tracks enforcement grant received by the Sheboygan Police Department. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch. Aye. Riesler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Born. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kath. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Fifteen. Motion carries 1660, General Ordinance Number 40-10-11 by Alderperson Kittleson, repealing and recreating various sections of the Municipal Code so as to incorporate recent state law changes. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion. Um, with the municipal judge shall be elected at large for a term of four years and uh, beginning at the spring election uh, 2011 and that's to coincide with <coughs> the state law changes that were made I believe so that we go along with state law changing that position from two to a four-year term thank you Very good any further discussion there is none roll call please Riesler aye Sampson aye Vanderweel aye Versi aye Wangeman aye Born. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kath. <coughs> Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. <coughs> Other matters authorized by law 1742 through 1745 will be referred. 1746, an RC by finance recommending authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a shared savings agreement with Wisconsin Power and Light Company relating to the financing of the purchase and installation of two 200 kilowatt capstone micro turbines for the wastewater treatment plant. Alderman Hammond. Thank you very much. Um, I move that the reporter committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Born. Aye. Falk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kath. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Rissler. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1747, an RC by the Marina and Harbor Committee recommending filing documents submitting the Harbor Center Marine Balance Sheet from operations dated September 30th, 2010, as submitted by Skipper Buds Marine, I believe is what it should say there. 
Mr. Mayor, I would uh, move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? There is none. All in favor of accepting and adopting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1748, an RO. Actually, 1748 will be referred to the Special Committee on Risk <coughs> Management. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. 1749 is a communication <coughs> submitting an email from Alderperson Bourne with an article from the League of Municipalities titled Inflation Factor Set at 3% for Expenditure Restraint Program. That will go to finan Finance and the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. 1750 is submitting an email from the Deputy Finance Director Treasurer titled Wisconsin Retirement Rates. That will be referred to finance, salary, salary and grievances, and strategic fiscal planning. 1751 is a communication from Mike and Terry DeMaster stating that they object to the ban on using small garbage bags. We'll go to Public Works. 1752 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. To law and licensing. 1753 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication and a formal request for a two-year extension from hooking up to the mini storm sewer adjacent to property at 3814 South 17th Street as per section 26-1002 sub D of the Municipal Code. That will be referred to Public Works. 1754 is an RO by Building Inspection submitting the report for the Building Inspection Department for the month of November 2010. Will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 1755 is submitting a summons and complaint in the matter of Alexandria M. Hine and the City of Sheboygan versus Tony L. Albert, Albert et al. Will be referred to Risk Management. 1756 is a resolution authorizing the sale of city owned property at 1309 Center Avenue. That will be referred to City Planning. 1757 is a resolution authorizing entering into a development agreement with BV Sheboygan LLC for the redevelopment of the former Walmart property located at 609 South Taylor Drive. We'll be referred to finance. Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. In a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.